Hello everyone and welcome to my Java programming tutorial. In this video, we will do contain method of binary search tree, how to write a contain method in binary search tree. So um, we have already done the binary int class uh, in tree class, which is so that this method will go in your in tree class if you want to test on Eclipse. So let's take a look. Uh, as with the binary search tree, we already know that we are writing two methods that you can write in all the previous uh, uh, topics which you have done. So whenever you are now, from now on, whenever you are writing any method for your class, you will write two methods, which is one is public and the other one is private. And the public method will, uh, user will only make a call to the public method and public method will make a call to your private method. I will directly start over here with our private method because as I don't have space, otherwise public method is simple, which you can see an example on Eclipse, which I have done in my previous video. So we will take a look how to dry run that contain method as well. So contain. Um, a tree is provided, maybe that tree is empty or the, it, that is a full-fledged tree. Uh, user wants to ask whether this value exists in your tree or not. So you have to return true and false and you maybe that tree is empty. So you just have to go through with all of those conditions. So let's take a look how to write a method contain. Uh, value is provided by user. Whenever we are working on our in tree class, what we have to do is uh, we have to write public method and then private. So I'm just directly jumping onto private, uh, private, and we are returning is true and false. So the return time will be boolean, and method name is contains, and what we are accepting from user is the value int value so user is giving as user can give it any value which is four five six and we have to go through our tree to tell user whether that value exists in our tree or not i am skipping the public part where we have to pass our root as well so that will be passed by our public method over here to our private method so it will be in tree node uh, let's say root comma int value so this value is passed by user and that's our tree the uh, root in which we have to start looking for so whenever you are whatever the method you are writing writing for binary search tree first thing you have to check is whether you have a tree or not and how to check in by just like in linked list your front is important in binary tree your root is important so my first condition will be if your root equal equals to null if your root is null it means there is no tree there is no value so it, there is no point of checking or going through the tree or anything because your root is null so if your root is null i will say return false I'm just writing in a, in one line because I don't die, I don't have space. Same excuse again and again. Okay, so if root is equal equals to null, return false. Another condition, else if. Else if is the case, it means your root is not null. It means your root is holding some value. So if your root is holding some value, instead of just skipping your root, directly going where, where is my value, first thing is if root is not null, check root. So else if root dot data equal equals to value. So if root dot data equal equals to value, if your root is the value which user is looking for, we are returning a boolean. So it will be return true. And open close parenthesis, uh, curly braces, uh, return true. Now we have another condition else if. What if your root dot data is not equal equals to value? you it means now you have to go through your tree to look for that value and when you are going through your tree what we need is recursion so binary tree is a combination of linked list and recursion so these are the base case now you have to think of the recursive case recursion in binary tree is very simple because binary search tree is already sorted so what we need to do is if root dot data is not equal to value, we need to check whether that value is greater than or less than root dot data because we have to pick one path. So that's how binary tree is more efficient it, and it is saving your time because you are only going in one direction and you are checking half of the tree or maybe more or less. 
So let's take a look how that next condition will be. So else if, if root dot data is not equal equals to value, so we need to check if root dot data is greater than value. So if root dot data is greater than value, it means now we have to go or do the recursion on one side. And how you do the recursion, you call the method name, same method name contains. And what we do is we, you cannot change the value passed by the user. You need to change your root because you need to assign a new root or you have to go left or right. So as we are checking root dot data greater than value, it means our value is less. So it means we have to go to the left side of our tree. So contains, I need to update my uh, root and it will be go root dot left comma value as I cannot change my value. Again, you will not change or update your value. So this is my recursive case. And then else is the case because as we have tested equals greater and the last case will be less. So that's why I'm using else, not else if. Else, what we have to do is contains root dot right. Go to the right side of that tree. Root dot right, comma, value. Yes. Okay. And that's a semicolon. Semicolon at the end. So this is the coding for our contain method to check whether that value exists in your code or not. Now let's do a dry run and see. I will be making or drawing a tree over here and let's do a small tree so that we can do a dry run easily and quickly. So let's say we have root as 10, we have five here, we have two and greater than five, let's say six, greater than 10 will be 12, less than it will be 11 here and let's say over here is 15. Okay, so this is our binary tree, which uh, user has asked. So our root is pointing at 10. Okay, so now uh, let's say our value is 11. The value we are looking for over here, value is 11. Value equals to 11. So let's take a look how this coding is working behind with this value. So your value is 11. You check if root equal equals to no. Is your root null? No, your root is not null. Then you check else if root dot data equal equals to value. Is 10 equal equals to 11? No, we will go to the else if, the third else if. So we have used else if statements. You will come at this point. It means none of these conditions were true. Else if root dot data is greater than value. Is root dot data, which is 10, greater than 11? No, it means we will go in else. In else, what we have is contains. Contain is a recursion. It's a loop kind of a thing. So it takes us back at the top with a new root, which is root dot right. So your root is moved to root dot right. So now your root is pointing at 12, root dot right with the same value 11. Now you check again, is root equal equals to null? Is your root null? No. Root dot data equal equals to value. Is root dot data, which is 12, equal equals to 11? No. Then you check as if root dot data greater than value is 12 greater than 11. Yes. So are this as if is true. We go in this as if there is a method call of the same method. We have recursion again. And what this recursion says, root dot left. So your root is updated to the left side. So your root is now pointing at 11 over here and you are passing the same value 11 and it goes back at the top because you have made a method called contain when you go up again you have if root equal equals to no is your root no no it's not no it's holding some value then you check your base case else if root dot data which is 11 equal equals to value 11 equal equals to 11 true return true it means that value which user has passed exists in our tree and the answer is true. This is the case where you have a value 11. So I have picked a value which uh, in which all of our if conditions were true. So let's take a look if your root is empty, there is no tree, it will check if root equal equals to null, it's null, it will return false. So let's take a do, uh, let's do another case where you have a value which don't exist in your tree. Okay, so let's take a look. Our value is, let's say, 20. 
So 20 is our value. Uh, let's take a look. So in this case, it should return false. So let's take a look how. So it will check if root equal equals to null. Your root is pointing at 10. We have the same tree. Your root is pointing at 10. Is your root null? No. Is your root dot data equal equals to value? No. Root dot data greater than value. Is 10 greater than 20? No. Uh, we will go in else where you have contains root dot right. So you are updating your root to the right side. So your new root is 12. Root dot right with the same value. You go uh, at the top again and you check is your root null? No, it's not null. Root dot data equal equals to value. No. 12 is not equal equals to 20 then you check root dot data greater than value is 12 greater than 20 no 12 is not greater than 20 we go in else where you have contains root dot right so you are updating your root to the right side so right side is this one your new root is 15 again you check root is equal equals to null is your root null no root dot data equal equals to value is 15 equal equals to 20 no uh, is root dot data greater than value is 15 greater than 20 no we will go in else again root dot right so now root dot right is what is right side it's null and the left side of 15 is also null so root dot right so now your root is null so you go back again at the top and it says if root equal equals to null it will return false and which shows that there was no 20 in our tree that's why your root is null in this case so in this case it will return false because you have reached the end of the tree and there was no value which you are looking for and the answer is false hopefully you have got the idea how the binary tree and the recursion works that's it for this video thank you bye bye